Have you ever considered just how much water covers our planet? Here's the quick answer, a lot. And since we can't breathe in or even withstand the pressure of the deep, there's a whole world of secrets down there, from underwater spaceships to the wreckage of the Titanic. So here are the 20 most terrifying things recently discovered underwater. Amazon Engine Delivery It's not every day that you get a shot at discovering an amazing piece of human history. But it's also not every day that you get to spend money quite like Jeff Bezos, the CEO of Amazon and a huge space enthusiast. So it was with his resources that he made the impossible possible and managed to locate the exact engines that propelled the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. It turns out that they were just lying at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean. Bezos, who credits the mission for fueling his original passion for science and exploration, embarked on a salvage mission with a team of undersea pros to recover at least one of the engines. However, it's still a public mystery as to how they were able to find them. So let's just assume that Bezos used a new version of his Amazon delivery drone to search for them. The engines, which have been submerged in salt water for over 40 years, were last seen driving the Saturn V rocket to the moon before falling into the ocean. While the Amazon CEO is over the moon with excitement to raise at least one of them, he's made it quite clear that he has no intention of claiming ownership of the engines and that the salvage operation was a wholly private affair with zero public funding used to attempt to raise the engines. Still, he does hope to display them for the public, possibly in Seattle's Museum of Flight. NASA has yet to comment on the discovery, but we like to imagine them saying, oh, we've been looking for those. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. The terrors of the deep have long been thought of as rumors or myths. Most of the legends have come from sailors with little to look at other than the raging ocean trying to take them down to Davy Jones locker. But while some of these legends have been proven real, like the giant squid or the kraken, there are still many unknown factors for us to rule out. But here we have a new anomaly, a rare sighting of something that hasn't been seen since the prehistoric age. What started off as a routine expedition turned into mayhem as the diver dropped his camera in the ocean. But when he looks at the footage, he found something unbelievable. Did he really capture this image on accident? Or are we looking at underwater smoke and mirrors? If we're correct, this creature could be the hidden Loch Ness Monster, or maybe a close cousin. We do know of dinosaurs that swam below the ocean long ago, and the resemblance is pretty uncanny. Of course, it could just be a toy dinosaur caught at just the right angle. We bet the diver is kicking himself for not exploring deeper after retrieving his camera from down below. But what do you guys think is the real source behind this picture? Is it an underwater revelation or a miraculous coincidence? Let us know in the comments with the hashtag missing topic to share your thoughts. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Sunken treasure. In a recent marine archaeology survey off the coast of Caesarea, researchers discovered two ancient shipwrecks filled with treasure. And no, it wasn't just pirate booty. The wrecks contained hundreds of silver coins, figurines, and even a gold ring engraved with the figure of the Good Shepherd, an early symbol of Christian art. Talk about finding treasure worth its weight in gold. According to the researchers, the two ships sank in different periods while attempting to maneuver the vessels into port. It's no wonder that sailors feared shallow, open water outside of a port. They were pretty much asking for trouble. The remains of the ship hulls and cargoes were scattered on the seafloor, waiting to be discovered by modern-day treasure hunters. The hull included a wealth of fascinating artifacts, including silver and bronze Roman coins from the mid-3rd century CE, a bronze figurine in the form of an eagle symbolizing Roman rule, and even some pottery vessels. But perhaps the most exciting discovery was the large octagonal gold ring set with a green gemstone carved with the figure of a young shepherd boy dressed in a tunic and bearing a ram or a sheep on his shoulders. This good shepherd image is one of the earliest and oldest symbols of Jesus in Christianity representing his benevolence towards the flock of believers in all of humanity, more or less. So, next time you're out for a swim off the coast of Israel, keep your eyes peeled for sunken treasure. Just remember to leave it in place and report your find to the Israeli Antiquities Authority if you don't want to be considered a pirate yourself. Freezing in the Fisher The Silfra Fisher in Iceland is truly something else. 
The Underwater Wonder is a fan favorite tourist spot for scuba diving and snorkeling enthusiasts, and for good reason, you can find this special location in Thing Valor National Park, where two tectonic plates meet and create crystal clear water that's pure enough for humans to drink. That being said, please don't drink the public water. Instead, let's talk about the real reason people come to Sofra, the diving. The water is so clear that some have said it feels like you're flying over the bottom of the ocean, and the colors are breathtaking. You'll see neon green algae along with bright orange rocks as schools of fish keep swimming on by. Then there's the feeling of being weightless as you glide through the water. It's like nothing else in the world. But let's not forget the cold. The water in Silphra is consistently around 2 degrees Celsius, which is roughly over 35 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's pretty cold. A proper diving suit isn't just recommended but completely necessary to stay warm in these frigid areas. But be warned, getting into a dry suit is no easy feat. It's like trying to put on a sausage casing, except the sausage casing is made of rubber and you're wearing four layers of clothing underneath. But once you're suited up and in the water, the cold is forgotten and all you can focus on is the incredible beauty surrounding you. All good things come at a price, right? So if you're looking for a unique and unforgettable diving experience, put Silfra on your bucket list. Just make sure you bring your sense of adventure and a whole lot of warm clothes. Ice Fingers of Doom Picture this, you're swimming in the Antarctic Ocean, minding your own business since no one else is around for miles, and then you suddenly see a mysterious icicle descending from above. You think to yourself, wow, this must be some new sci-fi phenomenon. But hold on to your flippers, bud, because what you're witnessing is a brinicle. Now, a brinicle may sound like the name of a fancy cocktail, but it's actually a fascinating underwater occurrence. It's like a frozen finger of demise, descending from the sheet ice above and freezing everything in its path. And no, this isn't part of a crazy hypothetical anymore. These are completely real phenomenon. The word brinicle is a combination of brine and icicle. The salt concentration in the intensely cold, salty water is so high that it doesn't freeze, but instead sinks down to the ocean floor. As it descends, it freezes other seawater on contact, forming a tube-like shape with an icy stalactite growing downwards. These things can grow to up to 25 centimeters, or almost 10 inches in diameter and several meters per day. When they reach the ocean floor, they transform into a sheet of ice, generally called anchor ice, that attaches to the seabed. The ice grows so quickly that it overtakes starfish, urchins, and other slow-moving marine life, engulfing and freezing them to the spot. The first brinicles were observed in the 1960s, but they weren't caught on camera until 2011. Even today, scientists still don't fully understand the process behind these icy fingers of doom, so if you ever do find yourself casually going for a dip in the Antarctic Ocean, keep your eyes peeled for these frozen threats. Who knows, you might even get to witness one in action. Ancient Greek Supercomputer For over two millennia, a shipwreck off the coast of a Greek island remained hidden with its treasure slowly corroding away in the Mediterranean. But in 1900, a group of sponge divers stumbled upon the loot and found an amazing device among the wreckage. This small bronze instrument, known as the Antikythera Mechanism, had over 30 hidden gears and was considered a clockwork computer because of its remarkable engineering. But since no one could tell what it really was, it mostly just sat in a museum for 50 years before historians figured out the untapped potential. The advanced but ancient device was built in 200 BC and appears to have been an analog computer far ahead of its time. It's capable of making precise calculations based on astronomy and mathematical principles developed by the ancient Greeks. Its small size suggests that it was designed for portability, and some think it was used to teach astronomy to those who knew little about the subject. To use the mechanism, all you had to do was crank it to enter a date and the gears would spin to reveal all sorts of information, from the positions of the sun, moon, planets and stars, to the dates of upcoming solar eclipses and the Olympic Games. The mechanism even compensated for the extra quarter day in the astronomical year by turning the scale back one day every four years. Although the Antikythera mechanism is the only known artifact of its kind, it's believed that other similar devices were built back in those early days but are still lost or damaged beyond repair. Today, the Antikythera mechanism is housed in the National Archaeological Museum of Athens. Hopefully, 
We'll see more added to the collection someday. Treasure worth fighting for. Nothing says pirate treasure quite like Spanish doubloons. While the currency of the old seafaring days might be gone, there was a lost Spanish galleon called the San Jose that carried a massive amount of gold and treasure. As with most of lost ship stories, this one sank during a battle, and for more than 300 years, people have been searching for its treasure. The shipwreck became a legendary tale that led to the people doing terrible things out of greed and treachery in pursuit of their unclaimed riches. By the 1980s, the first modern effort to locate the shipwreck officially began, and a private group of U.S. investors financed it. The group claimed to have located the wreck and offered to split the treasure with the Colombian government. And while the officials in change, and while the officials in charge did agree to divide the treasure, they refused to allow the explorers to perform salvage. The government passed a law giving itself 97.25% of the rewards. The investors sued in Colombian court and won a 50-50 split, but the Colombian government refused to follow the court's ruling. It sounds like there really is more honor among thieves. The investors also sued in a U.S. District of Columbia court, but ultimately lost their case. As of now, it seems that none of the investors will see any of the recovered treasure. The legend of the San Jose led people to misadventure and bad behavior for centuries, but in the end, the treasure always remained out of reach. Secrets of Loki's Castle They say that life started out in the sea, and it looks like there might be some truth to it. Scientists have made an astonishing discovery that could help us understand how simple life forms evolved into complex ones, like humankind. The researchers found a group of microbes at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean, a mile and a half below sea level, that appears to be a missing link in the evolutionary chain. It's like finding the lost key to your bike lock after searching for days, except this key unlocks the secrets of life on Earth. The microbes were found near a hydrothermal vent called Loki's Castle which sounds like the kind of place a Norse god would go to chill out away from annoying brothers. Maybe these microbes are actually descendants of the mighty Thor himself, or at least his bacteria buddies. The researchers were excited to find that these microbes had genes typically only found in more complex cells. Now that we have this new information, we can start piecing together the puzzle of how we went from tiny, simple organisms to big, complicated creatures like ourselves. It's like playing a game of biological Tetris, and we finally found the missing piece that fits perfectly. So buckle up, because this discovery might just be the start of a wild ride through the history of life on Earth. Only time will tell what answers are waiting for us. The Deep Dark Depths The deepest part of the ocean, located in the western Pacific Ocean, with a depth of over 36,000 feet, is a dangerous place called the Mariana Trench. It's so deep, it makes the Grand Canyon look like a mere pothole. So what's down there, you ask? Well, there are all sorts of creatures, ranging from the super cute to the super creepy. You've got your classic deep-sea anglerfish, with its glowing lure and sharp teeth. Then there's the gelatinous blobfish, which looks like a sad and squishy potato. And let's not forget about the giant isopod, a crustacean that's basically a creepy crawly the size of a small dog. And that's just scratching the surface, metaphorically speaking, of course. But it's not just the creatures that make the Mariana Trench interesting. It's also the geological formations. You've got your underwater mountains, your hydrothermal vents spewing out hot water and minerals, and your trenches that make the depths seem even more bottomless. And did you know that scientists have discovered microbes living down there? Yes, even in the pitch black darkness and extreme pressure, there are tiny living things down there. Who knows, maybe one day we'll find a tiny civilization of underwater creatures at the bottom, complete with tiny houses and tiny underwater cars. Overall, the Mariana Trench is a fascinating and mysterious place, full of wonders and surprises. We might never get to know about everything that's down there, but then again, maybe one day we'll get to check it out ourselves. The Hidden Sea Train Here's a fascinating find for all of you train lovers out there. Deep under the sea off the coast of Long Branch, New Jersey, lies a puzzling and amusing sight for historians and enthusiasts. Scuba diver Paul Hepler discovered some mysterious remains that wasn't the usual shipwreck you'd expect. Instead, he found two old locomotives resting on the ocean floor. The locomotives were identified as Class 222T, which is a rare breed of vehicle these days and generally used in train yards due to their small size. However, no one actually knows how they ended up at the bottom of the sea. 
The most widely accepted explanation is that the engines were being shipped from Boston to New York and were possibly pushed or washed overboard in a storm. You would think that someone would notice a missing train engine or two, but it seems like the crew didn't report the lost locomotives once they made it to port. Apparently, oversights like these must be really common. Despite being underwater for over a century, the locomotives still look pretty proud and recognizable, just covered in barnacles and marine plants. It's as if they're chugging a it's as if they're chugging along a sunken railroad, making their way to the aquatic station at the end of the line. With this mysterious underwater train wreck site, it's hard to imagine how much more history and treasure could be lying beneath the ocean surface waiting to be discovered. Underwater Gallery Are you ready for some underwater art that will leave you breathless? Look no further than the Molinier Underwater Sculpture Park, located off the coast of Granada. This unusual attraction features over 80 sculptures created by artist Jason DeCares Taylor that have been submerged in the crystal clear waters. There's a circle of children holding hands to a man sitting at a desk with a typewriter and the sculptures are not only beautiful but also intended to be thought provoking. Visitors are given the chance to explore the sculptures by snorkeling or scuba diving in a truly unique way. As you glide along the underwater paths, you'll feel you've entered a whole new world the sculptures are not only visually stunning, but also double up as an artificial reef, attracting a wide range of marine species. You may even spot a crowd of colorful fish or a curious sea turtle pass you by. One of the most striking sculptures in the park is called Vicissitudes, which depicts a circle of children holding hands. The sculpture was created as a commentary on the social and political issues facing Granada, with the children meant to represent the country's future. It's a powerful message that's only amplified by the underwater setting. Whether you're an art lover or just looking for a unique adventure, the Molinier Underwater Sculpture Park is a trip worth taking. It's a one-of-a-kind attraction that will leave you in awe of the beauty and power of art and nature. So grab your snorkel gear and get ready to dive right into this underwater wonderland. Neptune Memorial Reef the Neptune Memorial Reef, located off the coast of Key Biscayne in Florida, is like an underwater Atlantis, but with a twist. Instead of being an ancient city, it's a man-made reef that serves as a final resting place for loved ones. The reef is home to a variety of structures and statues, including one of Neptune, the Roman god of the sea that's over 16 feet tall. Families with connections can choose from a range of memorial options, including placing a plaque on one of the structures or having their loved one's ashes incorporated into the concrete used to keep building the reef. The Neptune Memorial Reef has been described as an underwater version of the Taj Mahal, which is a fitting tribute to those who love the ocean and life and now most eternally in its embrace. The structure is not just a place for remembrance, but also an artificial reef that's become a haven for marine life. Divers can explore the reef and its inhabitants, including sea turtles, nurse sharks, and vibrant coral formations. The concept of the Neptune Memorial Reef is truly unique, combining a love for the ocean with a desire to create a lasting tribute for those who have passed on. If you're looking for a way to be remembered that's out of the box, the Neptune Memorial Reef is definitely worth considering. Plus, what could be cooler than knowing that your final resting place is part of an underwater city? An underwater UFO Deep in the icy waters of the Gulf of Botnia lies a mysterious entity that's kept scientists in the dark since its discovery in 2011 by a group of subwater explorers. It's officially been dubbed the Baltic Sea Mystery and is a disc-shaped object that measures twice the size of a football field. From the right angle, you could see it resembles a giant mushroom rising from the seabed, with straight edges, construction lines, and boxes drawn on its surface. Some have called it a portal to another world, a Stonehenge of the sea, or the creation of a lost ancient civilization. Whatever the case may be, there are plenty of possibilities, but only one likely answer. Scientists have tried to explain its presence by suggesting it could be a link in human evolution, the base of a Nazi ship, or a glacial deposit, but there really is no concrete proof yet. However, the real mystery lies in the fact that all electronic equipment near the object seems to malfunction. Could it really be an unidentified flying object? Well, technically, an unidentified underwater object may be, but a UUO doesn't sound quite right. Still, a lot of people do think that that's what it is, going as far as referring to the object as the UFO Baltic Sea. Others believe it could also be a volcano, 
an asteroid or a meteorite that fell thousands of years ago. Regardless of the hidden truth, the Baltic Sea mystery has left divers scratching their heads and UFO enthusiasts excited at the prospect of proof of extraterrestrial life. Submerged Structure In another surprise discovery, a massive circular structure has been found submerged under the Sea of Galilee in Israel. Measuring 230 feet at the base and standing 32 feet tall, the structure is twice the size of Stonehenge and weighs an estimated 60,000 tons. This isn't your ordinary mystery building. Scientists stumbled upon the structure by accident in 2003 while using sonar to survey the bottom of the lake. At first, they didn't realize the importance of this ginormous find, but after consulting with archaeologists, the team quickly realized they were looking at an unusually large Bronze Age statue. While scientists believe it could also be a construction of underwater as type of fish nursery, archaeologists think it was likely built on land and then later submerged by the lake. The exact age of the structure is still uncertain, but estimates range between 2,000 and 12,000 years old, give or take a millennium or two. But even with a time estimate, the true purpose of the structure remains a mystery. One thing archaeologists are certain of is the monument was likely of great importance to the people who built it. They noted that the nearest basalt outcrop was a few hundred meters from the site and that the stones, which were three to six feet in width, would have weighed over 200 pounds and definitely weren't planted by accident. Despite the challenges of examining underwater ruins, archaeologists are excited about the potential findings that could come from excavating the site. Archaeologists hope that once they raise enough funds to excavate, they'll be able to learn more about the structure's exact age, purpose, and the people who built it. The Sea Prison We've heard of island prisons, but underwater ones? Hopefully they let you bring some floaties at least. In Estonia, there's a place called the Rumu Underwater Prison, and let's just say that it's not your typical tourist destination. The prison was built in the 1940s and housed Soviet inmates until the 1990s. However, when the prison was shut down, the quarry where the prisoners used to work was flooded and the entire area became an underwater wonder world. Now, visitors can go scuba diving or snorkeling to explore the eerie aquatic ruins of the prison. The water is crystal clear, and the sunken buildings and equipment create an otherworldly landscape. In a way, you can kind of see it like a post-apocalyptic Atlantis. But if you're not a fan of diving, no need to worry. You can still visit the Rumu underwater prison while staying almost completely dry. Visitors can rent paddle boards or a kayak to navigate around the quarry or just relax on the nearby beach and take in the unusual scenery. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can even try your hand at cliff jumping from the abandoned prison walls. But as a fair warning, the Rumu underwater prison isn't for the faint of heart. The abandoned buildings can be a bit creepy, and some people claim that the area is haunted. Of course, if you're looking for a unique and unusual experience, then this prison is definitely worth a visit. Just make sure you bring a waterproof camera to capture all the amazing sights. Sunken Place Norman's K might be the best place when you want to get away from it all, literally. Reports say that it's the ideal vacation spot for drug lords and their entourage when crime just seems to get a bit too tough to handle. To be fair, that reputation didn't start in this quiet little island on the Bahamas until it became a bustling hub for Pablo Escobar's cocaine empire. And what's the best way to fuel a drug trade? With a sunken World War II-era military transport plane, of course. Because nothing says, let's smuggle drugs like repurposing old military equipment. But let's not forget the main attraction, the 1,000-meter-long runway that was constructed for the drug runners to rest and refuel. Because what's a tropical paradise without a fully operational runway, right? It even had a radar to make sure no pesky law enforcement officials would get in the way of the drug trade. Like we said, it's pretty much a gangster's paradise, but even with all the security measures in place, things didn't always go according to plan. Like when a smuggling plane landed well short of the runway and ended up on a shallow sandbank. Those smugglers must have been kicking themselves for not paying extra for the pilot's landing lessons. But at least visitors can now snorkel around the sunken plane, which is a pretty rare thing to say. If you happen to visit, don't worry about Carlos Leader's fortress and armed guards these days. They're long gone thanks to the U.S. cracking down on the region and edging out the cartel with help from the Bohemian government. Just don't try to smuggle any drugs on board. Cleopatra's Water Palace 
If the crime ring isn't quite your scene, this island of Antarotos might be a more preferred vacation spot compared to the last one, especially for all you history buffs and deep sea divers out there. This quaint bit of land is off the coast of Alexandria and has got everything you need to make your underwater adventure truly unforgettable. And with the upcoming Cleopatra movie, you know this place is going to be the talk of the town soon. With a temple dedicated to Caesar, an unfinished palace for Mark Antony, and even a monument to the Egyptian goddess Isis, it sometimes feels like the island was built specifically to impress tourists. But as fate would have it, Antorodos met its untimely demise in 365 AD when a massive earthquake shook the seas and triggered a tsunami that ravaged everything in its path. And yet, from tragedy comes triumph as this disaster ultimately gave birth to one of the most spectacular underwater sights in the world. Of course, the star of the show is none other than Cleopatra's underwater palace, which lies submerged five meters below the surface. It's almost poetic that the final resting place of Egypt's last pharaoh is waiting to be discovered, just like the island itself. Of the three proposed crypts where Cleopatra's remains may have been, this place has been the least investigated so maybe that could be someone's ticket to fame and fortune. So grab your scuba gear and start exploring. Who knows what you might find? Waterlogged weapons The country of Jordan has taken underwater tourism to a whole new level with its first underwater military museum off the Red Sea coast. Forget tropical fish and coral reefs, this dive site has tanks, a combat helicopter, anti-aircraft guns, and even an army crane. You know, the usual underwater gear. And it's not just for military enthusiasts. Adventure-loving tourists can now experience the interaction between sports, the government, and the display pieces all at once. The authorities have made sure to integrate the existing coral reef with the museum to make it truly unique. And it seems like other countries are keen to jump on the trend, with Bahrain sinking a Boeing 747 off an artificial island complex to attract divers and tourists, and Turkey scuttling an Airbus jet near its northwestern coast to serve as a diving hotspot. Who needs boring old coral reef when you can explore a military vehicle graveyard instead? Just don't try to set anything off while you're there. The Titanic Wreck Everyone knows the story of the Titanic. Not the famous film, but the actual historical ship that sank. But for a long time, no one knew where it sank. Just the thought of it kept the oceanographer, Dr. Robert Ballard, restless as his team was on a mission to find it back in 1985. But after a week of combing the seafloor with a robot camera, they had found nothing but miles of sand and sediment. But just when hope was lost, the ship's cook appeared and told Ballard that the watch team found something amazing. Lo and behold, they had found one of Titanic's boilers. The team erupted with cheers and applause, and someone even popped a bottle of champagne. At least until they realized it was nearly 2.20 a.m. Coincidentally, the exact time the ship sank and took more than 1,500 people with it. Yikes! After several grueling days, they finally found riveted hull plates and one of the boilers. Success! The discovery of the Titanic was a huge moment for Ballard and his team, but it also came with some awkwardness. They realized they were celebrating at the exact same time the ship sank, so they quickly put away the champagne and went back to work. Lesson learned, don't dance on someone's grave, even if it's unintentional. Christ of the Abyss In 2009, an underwater photographer named Stephen Weir was on a mission to capture a statue of a really famous dude. And no, it wasn't Poseidon or Aquaman, but the OG himself, Jesus Christ. But this wasn't your ordinary divine statue of Jesus. This one was submerged deep under the sea at John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park in the Florida Keys. The original statue was called Christ of the Abyss and was made by an Italian artist called Guido Galetti. In his rendition, the statue depicts Jesus with his arms upraised, looking towards heaven. It was a touching tribute to an Italian diver named Giulio Merchant, who passed away near the spot where the statue was sunk. Fast forward to 1965, and an exact replica of Galetti's statue was donated to the Underwater Society of America. This statue has been through a lot, including storms and even a Category 3 hurricane. Yet it remains steadfastly in place, probably because it weighs a whopping 2,000 pounds. Unfortunately, the same can't be said for the rest of the underwater world. According to Weir, the reefs are dying out, pollution is worse than ever, and there are hardly any fish to be seen. But one thing that remains unintrusive is underwater photography. 
like Weir's snap of Christ of the Abyss. Thankfully, taking pictures doesn't harm marine life, so we can still enjoy some of the most stunning and unique images on the planet. The Road to Atlantis The Bimini Road, also known as the Atlantis Stones, is a mysterious underwater rock formation located off the coast of Bimini in the Bahamas. It's said to be the remains of the lost city of Atlantis, or perhaps an ancient road that once connected the island with other continents. The debate about its origin and purpose has been ongoing for years, and while some believe it to be a remarkable archaeological discovery, others think it's just a natural formation. But what's not up for debate is that it's another mystery transformed into a tourist attraction. People come from all over the world to snorkel and dive in the crystal clear waters to see the Bimini Road for themselves. Some even claim to have seen strange markings on the rocks that resemble ancient symbols or carvings. There are also some wild rumors of mermaids and sea monsters lurking in the vicinity. Although those are probably just the overactive imaginations of some adventurous swimmers, despite the lack of concrete evidence, the Bimini Road has sparked the imagination of many and become a fascinating subject of study and conversation. And let's be honest, who doesn't enjoy a good mystery? Whether you believe it's a remnant of an ancient civilization or simply a geological wonder, it's still an awe-inspiring sight to behold. Plus, it's a great excuse to take a tropical vacation and go on an underwater adventure. Deep sea exploration is both terrifying and exhilarating, probably because there's no saying what you'll come across. We still have more ocean than land to cover, so it's impossible to say just how much we've seen and how much is left before we know it all. But if you're brave enough to dive down far enough, there are surely some rewards and dangers waiting at the end. 